These three basic solar panels produce as much electricity as one of these. And the only reason is this one's pointed at the sun directly. That's the only reason. As you can see here, it doesn't make much of a difference whether there's some roof structure casting a shadow. So that can be ignored. I don't know what's going on here. This must be the other solar panel. Therefore, the choice of whether to build a standard solar panel, which would need some housing around it to protect it from storms, or a heavy solar panel that needs way more resources but doesn't care about storms, is a pretty easy one. What's not so easy is the choice of whether to build a single-sided dual, uh, a single-sided solar panel or a dual-sided, which has its logic uh, on a different port. A single port solar panel would require you to connect just the logic output of your chip housing. And since the logic output of your chip housing would have to be connected to your computer, and that will probably also have some other purposes, uh, that would be um, quite a decision problem regarding your overall cabling in here. But the choice seems easy, you just use a laptop then. Makes it a bit more cumbersome because you can't just write your source code and it'll run uh, immediately, but you have to swap out the chip the whole time. But otherwise, what's the problem? Fair point, and yeah, that's the way you could do it. Um, but you would still then have to wire your cable entirely to your station where that uh, housing is. Would make more sense then to also place the chip housing right in your solar panel uh, hall. And when you're doing that, then you need, make, need to make sure that it has power. So then we have a station battery here, which is not a problem, but then that's another worry, you know. You have your station's power supply somewhere, and then you have this power supply. You know when your station no longer has power, but now you have to worry about another power bank here. What if the chip runs out of power before the morning dawns, and then when the sun is there, they don't point at the sun. I mean, here I have solved that simply by just remembering the first moment of the day where the sun would be, and then in the evening when no longer sun is there, they will turn to the sun automatically, even though it's not there yet. So if the chip runs out of power, in the morning the sun would solve that. Anyway. Anyway, I'm trying to say that uh, it might end up being simpler, particularly for beginners who wouldn't know all those decision factors yet, to just use the dual-sided one, even though that seems like it's more complex. No, it's more simple. Here we have the power... Oh, it's wrongly placed. Uh, here we have the power connection, and here we have the logic connection. The power just goes straight to your station's power storage and the logic goes straight to wherever in your station you have your chip programming going on. So make sure you place your solar panels correctly when it comes to cabling and make sure you leave some space between them because they will cast a shadow upon each other and no, they will not look through that, they will be affected. Take a good look, this is the last time ever that we're going to see them like this. So let's get started then. Go to the kit solar panel, solar panel dual if that's the one you picked, and copy its name. Get the chip ready, and your source code also. Solar panels have a vertical and horizontal value, and I'm just writing the vertical. And immediately they start nodding. This is of course meaningless. It's a constant. We need a variable that is related to the sun. Now you need a kit sensor so that you can print with the electronics printer or the hydraulic pipe bender. And place a daylight sensor. But don't place it on the wall. Maybe on the ceiling. I would say definitely the floor. Else you will run into horrible mathematical complications. Whether you use a named approach or you just batch read from all existing d solar um, daylight sensors, that's whatever, that's your choice, but uh, let's be precise. So now that we have read the vertical value from the, uh, from the daylight sensor, I will just write that to the solars and then we will see what happens. Aha, uh -huh, they're moving. And are they moving in a meaningful way? Uh, looks okay, it looks kind of okay. The rotation horizontal isn't yet copied. Let's do that then. Like this. And now this reveals a problem.
We have two opposite groups. Of course, because of the cabling. I mean, it would have been horribly complicated, cable-wise, to do it differently. This cable is power for both sides, which means that one is turned this way, the other is turned that way. And the way to solve that is pretty simple. We divide them into two groups. There. A, B, A, B, A. And here. A, B, every second row, very simple. And then in the source code, we just add these two lines and we use them down here, named approach and both of them now need to be written. And of course to make that whole thing meaningful, we turn half of them by 180 degrees. Let's see what that does. Well, it equalizes them. Yep. Now let's see if they're correctly pointed. Hmm, they don't seem to be pointed correctly. Efficiency 77%? That's a joke, man. So what's the vertical doing? Which direction is it moving? Oh, pretty clearly they're moving upwards instead of downwards like the sun is. So we have to invert the vertical direction. That's simple. All we have to do is not add something to the vertical value, but subtract the vertical value from something. Let's guess 270. Can only be 0, 90, 180 or 270. If the daylight sensor is placed on the ground. Huh, what do we see here? It seems like what we thought was the correct vertical value was possibly just the very opposite of it and we also have to rotate the horizontal by 180. Hmm. There. That seems better. Huh. Mildly. To be able to gauge better what's really going on, I opted to take down the roof. But now we have to wait until the sun uh, is near the morning again. Okay, that's not really better. Maybe I was mistaken about the vertical being the exact opposite and the horizontal having to be rotated. Hmm. But that's the guesswork that you're exposed to. I mean, there's some kind of uh, formulas, so to speak, you have to remember. Put it in this way, rel in relation to the compass and so forth and so on, depending on world. But, uh, you know, this little puzzle game is fun and it's simply enough to solve. There we go. Efficiency 99%. Yeah, 100%, 99%, that's where they are. they're at. Rounding errors and all that. This works, this is good enough. And in the wee hours of the morning, accelerated by factor 10, This is what happens. And when stopped, yeah, 100% efficiency. So now we can see what that gives us. About 4000 watts. So let's pump that into our resources. And this is all it took. I had to invert the vertical by subtracting it from 90. And this 180 degrees uh, trick down here is only because of the opposite placement. So, yeah, you take this daylight sensor value and you copy them to the solar panel and maybe you have to twist them a bit. And that is all. Oh, and this is another reason to maybe use the dual ones because then you have the option to separate this completely. Otherwise, it would be tricky to connect the logic, right? By the way, in this scenario, you should refrain from putting some batteries in here because the discharge rate might be as fast as the consumer is and these batteries consume at light speed. So these cables might then burst, even though they are 100 kilowatts. No power coming in right now. Why is that? 
because our nice power source have been turned off. 4 kilowatts and 1 kilowatt. Yep. And that's all for today. 